Hello everybody. So today we will present to you with the crank arm, which is a stationary bike. It's a little part from that bike and uh, we are part from the group three. My name is Thales Nogueira and I will talk about the introduction and also the problem. And then we have Joshua Nissenbaum and he will discuss a little bit about the part composition and also the material processing. And we have Elizabeth, we will hope, and she will present us with the stress calculation and also some um, cause of the failure. And we will end up with Nathan Peterson and he will present us with the uh, simulations and also the design proposal. So let's start with the introduction. Basically, we are talking about the stationary bike, the crank arm especially. As you can see in that picture, uh, it's attached to the pedal and it's broken basically. Uh, the crank was used in the assembly and is enabled to mimic a riding and uh, the bike is just used for exercise. Now let's see what happens. So the problem was because the crank arm is just broken during normal use. The rider was just shifting his weight to the sides, as you can see in the picture in the, the corner, uh, the right side. Uh, the, the broke part is also is basically in the tracks, and that was the issue. And uh, that part is connected to the pedal, so that unfortunately it's broken. And we will discuss a little bit more about uh, that part. Perfect. Okay. So, um, the last part of the problem that we had, um, once we figured out that this is the, the crank on the broken crank arm is what we wanted to work with, um, was finding out what the original material was. Um, and the, the last part of the problem was that the manufacturer had no more um, information on the original material when we reached out to them. Um, so we kind of just had to go off um, research and similar products. Um, and so after our initial research, we figured that the crank arm material was a chrome-based stainless steel. Um, and after our first round of um, calculations, um, we found that the stainless steel um, probably wasn't going to be the material because the yield strength of stainless steel wasn't um, in our range of what we found in our calculations. And so after we did some more research and more calculations, we found that the material was probably um, A, ISI 4130 or a chrome denim alloy steel, <clears throat> alloy steel, excuse me, with a factor of safety of 2.2. Um, and as you can see here, um, these are some of the things that are used to make a chrome molybdenum um, alloy steel and some of the things that um, they're used for. And the ASI, AISI 4130, excuse me, has good machinability, um, but it's difficult to weld, which is okay. Um, but the chromium in the alloy provides for good um, hardness penetration. The molybdenum provides for uniform hardness and high strength throughout the alloy and the material. So our product that broke had a history that was a little bit unique to other products that might have broken. We did not know the first half of life that this product had seen. So we had to estimate its cyclic life cycle and the repeated loads that had happened to it up until the point it had switched owners. So you can see in this picture that our part is barely as big as a penny. And that was the part that fractured off under the repeated loads. So our deductive cause of reasoning was as follows. Metal is most like crystals. In fact, it has its own crystalline structure. When those crystalline structures are 
subjected to a repetitive force that bends them, their bonds begin to break, and as they begin to break, the more force that comes on them, those bonds don't come back together. So once those bonds break, they're broken for good, and it's only a matter of time before that propagates into a crack and therefore a failure like what happened in our part here. The reason we went with a fatigue cyclic cycle for failure is because of how old the stationary bike was and this particular part that was on it. The rider's weight at the time that it broke was 250 pounds and their height was 5'10", which was well within the range of its operating design. So from there we went to an estimation of stresses. And these are the equations that we used. First we had to find the I variable. To do that we were very easily able to solve it because we already knew what the length the thickness and the diameter was of the crankshaft that had broken. So from there all we did, had to do from solving to find the I variable in the stress equation was really simple after that. Where M equals the bending moment and Y equals the center of mass. And as you can see from our free body diagram this is what we came up with. We ended up not needing to calculate the forces in the X direction, the red arrow, because it was in line with the structure and the it would you need to have a leverage and a distance perpendicular to the force to be able to calculate anything. Since it's in line, that force would just follow the line of the stress lines in that particular part. So from there we were able to calculate from the top of the hole and from the top of the crank. As you can see, we found that our nominal, our nominal stress from the top of the hole was 214.54 psi. And from the top of the crank arm was 225.808 psi, and therefore the stress that had to be under, undergone in order for this part to fail. Right. Thanks, Elizabeth, for doing that part of our presentation. Um, so the next part of our presentation, we will be presenting in some simulations we did. So, um, manually we calculated that the maximum stress would be about 430 pounds per square inch. Um, we simulated that the maximum stress would be about 47,000 pounds per square inch. And I know that's quite the discrepancy, um, but we believe that discrepancy is likely due to the stress concentration factor of the threads. So we're very grateful that the simulation picked up on that and that it made us aware of um, how, much, how much stress the part would really be needing to handle. Um, with, that, with that information, we were able to identify appropriate materials. Honestly, we think the material that the crank's made out right now is probably the best one for the job. So that made us think that we should probably change some of the geometry a little bit. The simulations also enabled us to test our, our new designs. So um, if you look over here, um, these guys on the right hand side of the screen are the original geometry and the ones on the left hand side of the screen are what we're proposing for the new geometry. So um, the machinists had to machine down the end of the shaft to something like this and then they you know they filleted it out and um, machined out the front face there and um, also put in the hole and capped it. Um, but what we're proposing is that they, they keep a little bit more of that material on when they machine it down on their first pass and then they refine that um, a little bit more to make our, our new design. Um, so one of the nice things about um, the, the new redesign is the only difference is it's incorporating more of the original bar stock material. Um, which will, will greatly help us, you know, it's not going to add a lot more to cost. Um, it's less rounded. Um, some people might think that's a little bit less attractive. I personally think it looks pretty good either way. Um, 
So that, that's a matter of personal preference. Um, and then we also need no new equipment to do this. The machinists can be using all the same uh, machines and tools they were using before to machine this. So that will also help with costs quite significantly, but we are we are estimating it will take a little bit longer time-wise um, to machine to machine it out to the new geometry. Um, we also still recommend there be a fatigue analysis done at some point just to make sure that this actually is an improvement and that we're not going to see um, fatigue failure again with this part. So um, here's some side-by-side -side comparisons. So with the original geometry, um, we, we figured customers would be paying about $15 to, to buy it off the shelf. Um, with the altered geometry, the cost is going to go up a little bit. And again, that's mostly because it's going to take the machinists a little bit more time to do this. Um, so we're estimating that will bring up the cost by about $250, so $1750 for a customer to buy it off the shelf. Um, and then the maximum stress the original geometry experienced was about 47,000 pounds per square inch, uh, I've said before. With the altered geometry, it will be about 38,000 pounds per square inch. Um, that means that the altered geometry is cutting stress by about 33%, which is a significant factor. Um, uh, there's one more thing I'd like to make you aware of. If you go to our source list here, down at the very bottom, if you would like to look at our simulations, um, just check out that last link there. Um, and of course, if you want to check anything else out, um, check, the, check the other sources or contact me or my teammates. Thanks. This has been our forensic project, Crank Arms Stationary Bike Analysis.